everybody welcome back to my studio this is Emma and if it's your first time visiting with me here you're most welcome it's lovely to have you here as well thank you very much for all the comments and the questions I've been getting it's really nice to connect with you all anything I can do that might uh, assist you with any of your making that's great um, and if my work's inspiring you that's just fantastic I just love it you know one person getting what I'm doing here and taking it and using it in, in your own making. It's just fantastic, it really is. So this week we're finishing off my little landscape that I started. I think the colours are really lovely. It's really matched my mood, my autumnal sort of mood and feeling. We've kind of moved into November now, obviously, so it's getting a bit colder, but the colours are still out there. My friend along the road, I was looking at her lovely beech trees yesterday. She's got beech um, in her hedgerow and it's just gorgeous and the berries are still here and even the sort of dying seed heads look so lovely. I met a neighbour, another neighbour along the road, she was walking along the village the other day and in her hand she had a big bag of things she'd cut from the hedgerows. She had her secateurs and a big pair of gardening gloves and she was just going on, she was just going to take them home and put them in her house and look at them and there were beautiful leaves and seed heads and just whatever she could find. And it's just a celebration I think, it's celebrating nature. Um, we've had an awful lot of rain here, I don't know how, how you're getting on with rain at the moment but we've had quite a lot over the last week or so and um, it just, I don't know, it just brings out the beauty really of what's around. So as I say today I'm going to get on with the landscape and oh I know what I need to say is that I'm going to give myself a holiday next week, I've decided, I've awarded myself a week off. I've got a few bits and bobs I want to be doing, I actually am setting up work in a couple of places um, I'm doing one this week. Those of you who know Florence Art Centre at Egremont, very Cumbrian, uh, we're setting up for our, dare I say it, Christmas thing. So I'm going to take some work along for that and I've been very honoured, the Wool Clip who are in Coldbeck, those of you who know Cumbria, um, I've been asked to be a guest exhibitor there for them for November and December, um, which is really, really lovely. I did a lot, a few years, of doing Woolfest. Those of you who know Woolfest in this in the UK, the wool clip um, people who set that up set up. Um, sorry, those who set the wool clip up set up Woolfest. Is basically what I'm trying to say. So it's really lovely. I've just got these funny little things happening, nice things, expanding what I do, taking my work out into other places, and it's really great. My Wow workshop is just about ready to go off to them to be uploaded on their website and I'll let you know when that's there. And I've also got another workshop which I'm not going to show you because that's going to be my online workshop. Hopefully I'll get that tackled after my holiday. So no idea what we're doing after my holiday but I hope you'll have a lovely creative week and now let's get on with the landscape. Okay so here we are again. Here's my lovely landscape that I've made the background for which you've hopefully watch the videos and if you haven't well you can always go back over. Now what I've decided on in the end is I'm just going to do a very simple um, like a cow parsley head here. So it's going to need a stalk which I'm just using this for just to show you and I've got these which again these are just to show what sort of shape I'm going to head for. So I've just cut these little pieces of wool, little pieces of yarn as I say, they're not necessarily what's going to be the, the end piece that I'm going to use, but it's just useful to have whatever you've got around just to help you see and visualise. Because I don't know about you, but I, I until I see it, I can't really feel whether that feels right or not. It might not be quite that shape, I'm not quite sure. I might um, do that like that, that tends to work a bit better. So I'm just using, you know, these pieces just go on like that and you can start to make yourself this shape. And obviously that's a bit wobbly. I don't really want it that wobbly and I'll have to decide what sort of angle it's going to go at. But that'll be stitched down with zigzag stitch. So these are just very badly cut out little shapes. I just do this so I can see and feel whether this is beginning to feel like something I would like to turn it into. Um, and then I'll cut them out properly and we'll get them all done nicely. I might have to use some um, Wonderweb with this because it's quite a fraying fabric. I've chosen it because it's this gorgeous turquoise colour and um, but it does fray rather a lot so I feel as though that's kind of the way I want to go. It's not going to be framed, it's not going to have anything going over it so we won't lose any of the sides or the edges on it. Okay so that's what I'm going with that. Now what I was going to show you next was um, I think it was Nicole, hello Nicole, 
Thank you for a very good question last week, which was how do you actually make the cord? I was talking about using cord and making cord to make the stems um, for this. And I think I showed you this bit here. This is a bit of a thin piece. And I don't know if you can see, it's made with a light colored wool underneath. I don't know how close I can get this, to be honest. I'll just leave it there, I think. You can see that it's quite patchy. So it's got a light colored wool underneath and then it's got dark zigzag on. And depending on how closely you do your zigzag, here's another one, this is in green, as to how much um, colour of the wool that's underneath shows through. It could be wool, it could be string. This one's quite a thick piece. It's possibly got several bits and it's been really overlaid with zigzag stitch. And then you can start, you can actually blend your colours a little bit if you use a different colour in your top and your bottom bobbin. You can actually blend the colours a little bit. So I thought, well, I'll just show you quickly how to do that first. So let's go over to the sewing machine and I'll just show you how to make a quick piece of cord. Okay, so I've cut myself a little piece of yarn here. This is quite a coggly yarn, but I'm going to pull it straight as I do it. Now you can either do this with your uh, free machine embroidery foot on and just do a, a zigzag and pull it through. Um, you could use your normal presser foot, or, I, foot, I guess, but I do know you can actually get a proper foot for doing cording. If you just wait a moment, I'll just show you what that is. Okay, so this is a special foot for doing cording with. You can see it's got a special little wire hole here, and you just basically put it on like you'd put on a normal presser foot, but you press the, you put, pass the cord from behind your presser foot through, and you pull the cord through, and you just use that as a normal presser foot with your zigzag. But the way I like to do it is to use just my free machine embroidery. So I'll put it onto a zigzag. You always make sure your zigzag's really wide, much wider than the cord because, and put your presser foot down, because that way you're likely to get the whole cord and not um, sort of miss any of it. So I'm just gonna do this bit and I'll show you. So you can see the cord tries to move a bit. So you just hold it quite tight and just pull it very slowly through the machine. process I'll just lift that up and show you what that's done so it's made it quite thin okay you can kind of see where it goes in I think there so basically you're just doing it that's all you're doing you're just zigzagging the piece of cord and you're pulling it through letting the machine do the work you can put as many um, What's the word? As many sort of threads through it. So you could do three, possibly, if you can pull it tight enough and you've got a wide enough zigzag, or you could just do two, because obviously it makes it thinner because the stitching pulls it in quite sharply. The trick with doing the cord is to hold it quite close. Can you see my fingers are really quite close to the presser foot here? Because that gives you control over the cord. It's a very slow process actually, you can't rush it because you're likely to snap your thread and all sorts of horrible things happen. If I'm doing two pieces of yarn together, I will do it all the way down once, just loosely to hold it all together and then I'll go back over it. And you can go forwards and backwards, so if you don't think you've got enough stitching on it and it's not being even, then you can go back over. So at the moment I'm going forwards and backwards. I kind of get to there and then I move my back fingers down a bit. So here we are. Now I have made my lovely cord here. So I've got a thin piece which is quite long because that's going to be the bit that's going to be for the, the little fine stalks up at the top. And I've got a thicker piece down here that's going to be for the bottom bit. Now the only thing is I'm not very keen on it going this way with those up there. It just doesn't feel quite right. So I am just wondering, I've had a little play and I think what I'm gonna do is something quite radical. I'm gonna just turn this upside down because I feel as though it works better that way up. And I don't know why, no idea why. It's completely just something I'm feeling, okay? So let's, you know, run with it and see what happens. I'm just cutting these off. Sometimes you get little threads left over where you've had loops and things when you're doing cord. I will cut those off. 
um, and then this is going to get cut into these lovely little pieces like this. So that's going to be like that. And I just feel as though, I don't know why, it's as though it's busy down here. And then this means that these bits can just shine out from that dark plain background. I think it's going to be much better. So I'm going to cut. What I've done is I've ironed the fabric that I want to use for the little seedy bits and I put it onto some bonder web, I've drawn some sort of funny little shapes and I'm going to cut those out and I've got all different sizes because I'm not quite sure how many of them I want and I'm not quite sure you know how big or small they want to be so I'm going to cut those out next just very simply the beauty of bonder web is I have to say I don't use it very often but sometimes it's really just the bee's knees if only to stop things from fraying too badly. It's awfully useful stuff. So we'll just cut these out. And of course you can do this, you can cut shapes out and they'll stay that shape. Okay, so I'm just cutting my little bits of cord now to roughly the right sort of size. There we go. And what I do is I tend to sort of overlap them like this so you get a feeling that they're all joined together. And I might just put, I don't I like even numbers, I have to say. I think you should do things in threes or fives or sevens. <sighs> Oops, slight glitch there chaps because my camera just died. I ran out of battery. I was trying to make my battery last out till I'd finished filming this segment but it didn't quite make it. So let's just start that little bit again. And uh, if, if there's a glitch in the continuity, that's why. Uh, so I'm gonna just line those on there like that and then what will happen with these, I'll stitch these down and then I'll be able to pop those on top of there and stitch those on top. I put the stalks down first. It's a bit fiddly this bit, okay. They do tend to wander a bit uh, when it comes to stitching them. So I'll do them like one at a time kind of thing and I'll just pin them on like this. And um, I'll do them one at a time and add them on. In fact, I don't need to pin that one, I'll pin this one here. I'll actually take them off. Have I got the right one there? No, not quite. I still haven't got the right one there. I'm gonna pin that like that, okay and we'll just see where we get to as I go along and I'll just add them in. It's a bit of a, it's a bit hit and miss but it'll work and I'm just going to basically zigzag those down very lightly because it's got a lot of, um, it's got a good standing up quality if you like, it shouldn't get too pressed down into the fabric. So let's go and get that done now. The beauty of this is you can just move from one thing to the next and you can see I've done all of those around there. It's just a bit of slow stitching and I'm just kind of going, to going round and round just because I feel that's what it wants so you know that's how it goes but you can move as I say you can move from one to the next one by lifting up your presser foot make sure it's down for the next one. Just take it slow, go around I chose this colour thread because I really wanted it to sort of make these seed head bits pop out. If I'd done it all in the turquoise I think that would have been fairly sort of bland and boring so I just chose an orangey shade from down right down at the bottom, oh you can't really see that, right down at the bottom anyway, a thread that I've used already. Mm -hmm. 
and there's never a right way or a wrong way to do this you just do you know what pleases your eye so I think I'm gonna just get all the threads snipped off and cleaned up and then I'll show you it as the finished piece okay so this is it finished and I'm really quite pleased with how it's turned out you never quite know as you're going along uh, there's a bit of trepidation because you never quite know how it's going to turn out um, even if you plan it to start with I think there's still possibilities can come along as you go along the interesting thing I think was turning it upside down so that the brown is at the top and somehow it allows these just to shine out I think prior to that I had all of this busyness going on in one place and it was a bit unbalanced so it's like we've got a nice interesting foreground down here now and then the seed heads as I say can just shine out I think the other thing was deciding not to do turquoise thread going around the the tops of these seed head bits here natural seedy bits um, that would have been fine it would have been safe it would have worked but somehow it just wasn't exciting enough for me <laughs> you know I like to live on the edge here um, so I actually I decided I looked at I looked at what colors I could use I thought about reds I thought all sorts of different colors and then I thought well actually I'll choose this sort of gingery slightly uh, orangey color that I use down here and it's great because it just makes those shine out as I say it's a little bit of a risk but I think it's quite nice it makes them look quite light and bright at the top there and you can really see them and then it's balanced by this bit down here so I don't know what you think about this I don't know what you think about me turning it upside down what a what an outrageous thing to do <laughs> um, but I have to say I've really enjoyed the process it's been really cool oh I forgot to say this is how I decided actually as well I always make a little sample if I'm not sure what it's going to look like or if I'm going to like it I made a tiny little sample here so I could hold it up and go oh yeah that is okay that works okay really worth doing just ever so tiny bits of scraps so there we go another lovely project finished and I hope you've really enjoyed watching this I've really I've really enjoyed myself doing it it always takes me on a journey I never quite know how it's going to turn out and that's where the excitement comes in um, so I don't know what's next um, except as I say I'm going to have a week's holiday next week because I just think it's time for a bit of downshift we've had an awful lot going on here we've had the builders in and they're still in and it's now November and things are just you know changing all around us so I'm going to have a week off next week and I hope you will have a nice week doing whatever you're doing and I will see you again very soon with who knows what's next so thanks so much for watching I really appreciate you being here Bye for now from me.